Is the Tesla Model Y the safest SUV ever made? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Currently, there is no crash data out for the Model Y yet, but we do know that the Model Y is built on the same platform as the Model 3, and it shares somewhere around 75% of the same parts. Because of all these similarities with the Model 3, the crash test results for the Model Y should be as good or better than the Model 3. Also, since the Model Y is Tesla's newest vehicle, it has the advantage that it can benefit from all the learnings that Tesla has made over their previous vehicles and over their safest vehicle to date, the Model 3. When Tesla revealed the Model Y to the world, here's what Elon Musk had to say about the Model Y's safety. Like the three, uh, it, it will be extremely safe. So that the you may know the, the Model Three uh, has the uh, the lowest probability of injury of any car ever tested by the uh, U.S. government. Um, the Model Y we expect will have a, a similar result. Uh, five stars in every ca every every category. With the battery pack low low in the floor, it's going to have a very low center of gravity. So this will it it it, it has the, the functionality of a of an SUV, but will it will ride like a sports car. So it, this thing will be really tight in corners. Uh, and we expect it will be this, the, the safest uh, a mid-sized SUV in the world by far. And at Tesla, we actually uh, always design with safety as the number one goal. Um, it's, it's like, like people, people think, OK, performance, sure, but, but safety first. Um, this is actually by far the most important thing. Now, as I talked about at the beginning of the video, the Model Y is built off the same platform as the Model 3. So if we look at crash data for the Model 3, we can get a little bit of an idea of how the Model Y might fare. There are three main crash test organizations that we're going to be talking about today and talking about the data they have for the Tesla vehicles. The first one is the NHTSA, or the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The second is the IIHS, or the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. And the third is the Euro NCAP or the European New Car Assessment Program. I think in order to get the complete picture of how safe a vehicle is, it's important to look at the crash data from all three of these main organizations because each one has their own little niche. For instance, according to the NHTSA website, they are the only organization that rates rollover resistance in addition to frontal and side crash worthiness. So in a lot of ways, the NHTSA data might be the most robust and most helpful in many cases. The IIHS data is really important as well, and we'll talk about that. But I really love how the Euro NCAP organization makes it really easy to compare vehicles side by side because they give a percentage of safety for each particular category. And that's a really important way to categorize these vehicles and compare them one to another. So in order to build the case for why I think the Model Y will be the safest SUV ever, let's move on to looking at the crash data for the Model 3 in which the Model Y is built off of. If you look at the IIHS information for mid-sized luxury cars, you'll see that the Model 3 has a top safety pick plus amongst just three vehicles in that class that got that rating. If you look at the Euro NCAP score, you'll see there that overall the Model 3 got a five-star rating in their testing. And if you look at the NHTSA data, you'll see that once again, their overall safety rating and the safety rating in each one of the ways they test the vehicles was a five-star rating. So as you can see from this data, all three crash testing organizations gave the Model 3 their top rating. But it's important that you actually dive deeper into the data because just a star rating doesn't actually give you the complete picture of how safe a vehicle is. When these organizations give a vehicle a five star rating, that's kind of like getting an A in school. But what's important to realize is that somebody might be able to get a 92% in school and get an A, and another person might be able to get a 99% in school and also get an A. But of course, the person who got a 99% did better than the person who got a 92%. For instance, the NHTSA gives a five-star rating to any car over a certain threshold. But that doesn't differentiate between maybe somebody that just barely makes a five-star rating and somebody that is way safer than all of the other five-star cars. 
So because of this lack of differentiation in the five-star rating for the NHTSA data, Tesla dove in and found out that according to the NHTSA data, their vehicles had the lowest probability of injury of any of the top vehicles that they have tested since 2011. If you take a look at this chart, the Model 3 has the very lowest probability of injury of any of these vehicles. The Model S is number two and the Model X is number three. So as you can see from this chart, the Model S has a 6.3% probability of injury. The Model 3 has a 5.7% probability. The Model X has a 6.5% probability. And when you compare the Model S to the Model X and you take that same percentage increase from Model S to the Model X and compare that to the Model 3 versus the Model Y, I estimate that the Model Y will have somewhere around a 5.9% injury probability based on NHTSA trends. Another really important statistic for SUVs is how likely they are to roll over. As I mentioned when I talked about the NHTSA testing, they are the only organization to actually test the rollover resistance of these vehicles. And so if you look at their data, the Model S has a 5.7% rollover risk. The Model 3, 6.6%, the Model X, 9.3%, and the Model Y, I estimate, will have somewhere around a 10.8% rollover risk. I made this estimation once again by comparing the same percentage difference between the Model S and the Model X and using that percentage to compare the Model 3 to the Model Y. So in order to really appreciate how low these numbers are for Tesla's vehicles, I think it's really important that you compare these to other vehicles that are popular and considered safe. So as I mentioned before, the Tesla Model X has a rollover risk of 9.3%. The BMW X5 has a rollover risk percentage of 15.9%. The Volvo XC90 has a rate of 17.9%. And the Mercedes GLE has a rating of 19.8%. So as you can see, Tesla vehicles have a very low rollover risk because all the weight of the battery pack is at the bottom of the vehicle. So if you compare my rollover risk estimation for the Model Y to other vehicles in its same class, you can see there that it has a much lower risk than some of these other vehicles. The BMW X3 has a rollover risk percentage of 17.1, the Volvo XC60 17.6%, and the Mercedes GLC 18.6%. Now let's move over to Euro NCAP data, which makes it really easy to compare one vehicle to another and has percentages that makes it very easy to determine the safest vehicle. So if you take all their data and look at the top overall rated vehicles, you'll see that the Tesla Model 3 is second of all the vehicles that they've tested. This overall rating is determined based on how the vehicle has done in their four main categories. The adult occupant safety, the child occupant safety, vulnerable road users, and safety assist score. If you dive into each one of these categories, instead of just looking at the overall rating, you can see starting with the safety assist rating that the Model 3 and the Model X have the very top scores as compared to any other vehicle that the Euro NCAP has tested. They both have a safety assist score of 94%. If you instead rank this by adult occupant safety, you can see that the Model X has the third highest rating for this particular category. According to the Euro NCAP, the one place where Tesla vehicles don't score quite as well as others is in the child occupant safety. And you can see here that we look at this top list and you rank it from top to bottom for child occupant safety, that in the very top vehicles, Tesla is number 24 on the list. But once again, I want to take you back to that overall rating and the safety assist score and really talk about why I think that is a really important metric and why it really shows how safe a vehicle is. So obviously, I think the Euro NCAP, based on this data, the reason they put the Model 3 so far up in overall rating is because it is really likely to actually avoid an accident rather than get into one. If you avoid the wreck altogether, you have a 0% chance of injury, and of course, that, in my opinion, is the most important statistic. Should the car do good in other categories? Of course, and the Model 3 does, and the Model X does, and the Model S does, but I think it's important, and I believe the Euro NCAP thinks it's important as well, that the vehicle be able to avoid accidents wherever possible. So as the Euro NCAP organization pointed out, Tesla's safety assist features are far superior to other car manufacturers. 
And according to Tesla's data, they really do help them avoid accidents altogether. Over the last several years, Tesla has put out a quarterly safety report talking about just how many accidents their vehicles get into. And if you look at this data, according to Tesla, they record one accident for every 3.07 million miles driven with autopilot engaged. If you do not engage autopilot, but just use the basic safety features built into Tesla, you have one accident for every 2.1 million miles. And according to the NHTSA, the average in the United States is one accident for every 479,000 miles. So as you can see, with autopilot engaged or not, Tesla vehicles, because of their safety assist features, are much safer and give you a much better chance of not getting in an accident. Another really important safety statistic is to look at the fire risk of the vehicle. According to Tesla's data, between 2012 and 2019, in Tesla vehicles, there was one fire for every 175 million miles driven. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, the average car fire is one fire in every 19 million miles driven. So Tesla's electric vehicles are not only safer because they avoid accidents, but they're also way less likely to have a fire as well. So we've gone through a lot of data in this video, but the question remains, is the Model Y the safest SUV ever? Now the Model 3 has the very lowest probability of injury of any vehicle that the NHTSA has ever tested. And as I mentioned, they really have the most robust crash testing of any of these other organizations. Testing not only the regular things, but also the side crash worthiness and the rollover resistance. These are really important statistics for an SUV and they really do play in the overall safety of the vehicle. On top of all this, as we mentioned, Tesla has the best safety assist features of any other vehicles and this is their latest vehicle so they've been able to take all the safety learnings from their past vehicles and implement them into the Model Y's design. So when you combine all this data together and you compare the most robust testing from the NHTSA, which said the Model 3 was the safest vehicle, and you look at the Euro NCAPS data, which says that Tesla has the very safest driver's assist features, you can quickly build a picture here that shows that the Model Y will be the safest SUV ever, not only if you get into an accident, but compared to other vehicles, it will avoid a lot of accidents. So when the crash test data does come out, I have no doubt that the Model Y will be a five-star vehicle, and I do believe it will be the safest SUV ever tested because of all the things we've talked about. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, if you click the like button, that would be great so other people can find the video. And I also wanted to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank my Patreon supporters. And if you would like to find out more information about supporting this channel and helping me make more content in the future, you can find a link to the Patreon community in the description below and find out more of how you can support me. Thank you so much.